Good evening. Let's see if this is working. Three people seem to be online already. Nice to see. Where can I see? Yes. Five people already. Awesome. Let's wait a few minutes before we start. Seventeen people are already online. Awesome. How are you guys doing? Hello, someone is already tuned in from Tunisia, I see. Great to see. Okay, I guess without further ado, let's get started. Everybody can join later if they feel like it. Hello everybody, my name is Christian Kamphaus. I'm from Finland. I'm a national Pumse and a freestyle athlete. And um, I'm gonna be uh, coaching you today. I had the honor from uh, the Lens sister to, uh, sisters to um, give this sh session today. And uh, it's gonna be a kicking session. I saw yesterday uh, you had a great coach from Spain doing a pretty intensive training session. Today is gonna be pretty technical. We're going to be doing practicing hook kicks and uh, even spinning hook kicks, but mostly the technique on hook kicks. Yeah, what else? I can still see people are joining. Awesome. More than 40 people already online. Well, if you have any questions about the training session, let me uh, know in the comments. I try to check now and then. Let's start with basic warm up. Let's get our joints warmed up. Very, very normal basic warm up we like to do. Very simple things. Turn your arms, turn your elbows. You won't be needing much space, but a little bit space, so be careful. I already had my lamp. Arms forward, arms backward. Let's get the blood flowing. little bit movement in the upper body. Let's do the joints from the lower body, starting with the knees. Put your legs together. Make big circles. Let me know, guys, if you can't hear me well. I hope the microphone will pick my voice up. It should be pretty quiet in here. I guess people are almost getting to bed already because it's a little pretty late in Finland here. Okay, let's go up and down. Try to keep your heels as close to the floor if you can, or on the floor. The blood flowing, hands on the floor, or just the fingertips. If you can, put your pal palms on the floor, keep them there, straighten your legs. Good. Same thing, but a little bit wider. Whoop, just like that, nice and easy. Get some movement in the joints. Try to keep your heels on the floor, your back pretty straight. Then a little bit wider. Go to one side as low as you can. Try to keep your back straight. Turn your toes from the straight leg up in the air. Then sit down slowly and controlled. Put your knee on the floor, knee back as far as you can and try to get up without your arms if that's really hard if you're stuck here down use your arms to help yourself but try to go without that to the other side same thing keep first your foot on the floor flat then turn and twist the toes up in the sky to your roof knee in knee back out and come up a few more times take your time at your own pace. Good. Now let's go down again. 
So turn to the bent leg. So you get a hip flexor stretch. Try to keep your back flat, not like this. Think about if you would have a tail like a dog, put the tail down. Feel the stretch here. The opposing arm from the front leg up in the air so you can feel the stretch. So if your right leg is in the front, left arm up. A little bit movement. Up, down, forward, backwards. Good. Other side. Arm up. Again. Back flat. So not like this. Good. Nice. Let's see. You can see already 70 people online. If you just got up, my name is Christian. Nice to meet you. You can call me Chris. Today's training session is going to be about hook kicks and spinning hook kicks. So um, let's do some more warm up before we get into the real training session. Let's uh, get our joints really loose so it's easier to kick and get ourselves ready for the training session. So we had our hips, make big circles. Try to keep your head on one in one spot. Other side. A little bit wider stance, same thing. Try to still keep the hips moving. Might be harder when it's wider. That's why we're doing it, to get better at it. Good. A little bit, um, little bit um, le more legs. Let's get a little stretch at the front of the legs, the quadriceps. Not too long, just a little bit. Get our body ready for kicking so we don't start out totally cool, uh, cold. We don't want to pull any hamstrings or muscles while training. Good. Let's get a little bit stretch and more stretching. Tilt the camera a little bit. You can maybe see better. Sit down. As wide as you're comfortable. Not the all max, you can go pretty relaxed. If that's here, that's okay. It doesn't really matter. But try to keep your back straight. So you're not sitting like this. Very good posture. Let's get a little bit of movement. We're not trying to get our maxes out, we're just trying to feel our legs, what's the condition of the day. Okay, and gently go side to side, toes pointing up, so you're not going like this, you're sitting on the floor, a little bit of a pancake stretch, then from the upside to the opposite foot, so we get a little bit of a stretch in the size as well nice so let's go one two three four and then put the hand on the floor behind you turn the back leg and stretch like this so you're almost going from the pancake stretch into a front split kind of side kicks kind of stretch so one two and the opposite arm like this lift up and go as low as you can if you're really flexible, you could just stay on the floor all the time. I'm a little bit stiff today. I've been training already. Whoop. So down. Down. Good. Get loose. Feet on the floor. Get some internal rotation and external rotation in the hip. You should feel it here if you can. If without the support of your arms, if you need the support of the arms, that's okay as well. Take your time, just gently, a few times. So our hips, our hips will be ready for the kicking. Nice and loose. The stiffer we are, the harder we have to work against our, each, our, our own bodies. That's not what we want. We want to be light and fast. Whoop. And then some glute stretch. Keep your back straight again, don't be like this. As you can see, you don't need that much space. I'm in my apartment as well. So if you're 
quarantined in the country you're living. If you're not able to go to your dojang, you can still train at home. Or maybe even outside if the weather isn't too cold, like here in Finland. Well, you can still train outside, of course, but it might be a bit more extreme. So, almost 100 people online. Nice to see you guys. My name is Christian, if you haven't met me before. So, let's get our heart rate a little bit more up. Now we're a little bit loose, hopefully, and uh, almost ready. But let's get our blood pumping more. So let's get just a little bit of movement in the upper body. Basic push-ups. Keep your glutes tight. Don't go like this. Don't be like this. Push-ups, chest down, nice and easy. If you can, do a little bit of jumping, some explosiveness. If this is too hard, put your knees on the floor, same thing. Doesn't really matter. Do at your own, own level. What's challenging enough for you? Challenge yourself it's, if it's hard to do many regular push-ups like this. Do as many as you can and then switch to this. Good. This will get our upper body and core a little bit warmed up. Good. Some more leg exercises. Let's do some scrimp squats. You don't need much space. So go down. Knee touch the floor. Come up. Give me 10 of these. If this is too hard, this is pretty hard. It's for the mobility. Just put the other leg down like this and go down like this. But if you don't need the support, Go without and try to practice your balance as well. Down and up. So if this is too hard, just use your other leg as well. Go down like this. If you just need a little bit of assistance for balance, just lightly touch the floor, not all the way. Other side. Might have gone wrong, but you guys do 10. Good. Try to check that your knee doesn't go in. We don't want that. You don't want to have the same line with your, with your, with your knee and toes. So we don't st stress the sides of our knee unintentionally that's not the point of the movement and that can be bad in the long run if you always do it the wrong way and we don't want injuries because then we can't train and that's no fun good let's get a little bit more even a little bit more uh, blood pumping let's do some running on the spot if you had like 10 or 15 seconds and we'll get back to this why this is important to also practice just running get your knees up ankle flexed Closing arm and leg go like this. Nice and high. Don't go like this. Don't let your arms fall. Stay up. Nice. That should do it. We'll, we will get back later to the running technique. And I'll tell you later why and how that will help you understanding the hook kick and spinning hook kicks because they're actually much more similar than you would think okay i'm at least warmed up you can see that 90 people are online let's get um let's get to the actual kicking and technique part all you're going to need is a little bit of space not much and a chair or a wall you can use to support yourself if needed if you're a pro Feel free to do it without the uh, support. But when we're training technique, it can be really useful to use a support like a wall, a wall or a chair, so it's easier to train. <clears throat> Let's start with the technique. I know that there are many different ways to do a hook kick and spinning hook kicks. This is the way I like to teach it, because I think if you can do this way really well, you can variate it into different styles. What is a hook kick? How does it about look? Do it with the front leg to get your knee up and kick all across like a hooking motion. That's where, where the, at least the English name comes from. I guess it's like Nakta Chabi in Korean. I'm not counting it, I'm pronouncing it or saying it uh, the right way, but you get the point. 
So we're going to be kicking our targets in the middle, preferably head height. If you're not able to kick head height, that's also fine. You can also train to the body, but later try to go up and up and up. The higher the better to train control and mobility and strength. But yeah, basic kick, very useful for sparring. We don't have it too much in Pumse, but we do have it a lot as a spinning kick in freestyle Pumse. And also some of the modern big arc Pumse CTC. You know, uh, so um, you have the standing one with the front leg like this. And then you have it as a spinning kick. Let's check, I don't kick anything in my room. So you kick all the way across with the spinning. So you turn around and we'll get back to the technique later. But that's what we're going to be training today. And uh, I guess we, we will need an hour for this because it's quite a, it's a simple, but simple is not always easy kick, the same as easy. It's a simple kick. I want you guys to start down on the floor and uh, imagine a line in the middle. I'm going to be kicking and facing the camera at this point. <clears throat> but uh, you guys know, of course, Yopchagi, side kick. That would go straight into the target like this. And now you have to imagine the target where I'm kicking. So it's a straight line and it's going that way, the energy. <clears throat> side kicks and hook kicks are pretty similar. When you're doing a hook kick, our target is in the same place as with a Yopchagi, but we're not kicking that way, we're kicking across. We're hooking the target and reeling it in. So we're going to be starting on the floor like this. You can support yourself with your arm on the floor. If the floor is really hard and you don't have a tatami like I do, uh, try to find a position that doesn't hurt too much or use a pillow or something if you need to. But uh, yeah, the kick is pretty simple to practice this way. <clears throat> so the idea is you have a target in the middle. That's what we're going to be trying to kick really hard. And we're not trying to just slap it like this. We're trying to kick through it all the way. Because if you want to break boards or you want to do a good um, hard kick in sparring or kyorogi or uh, just for show as well, just also a freestyle pumse, you don't want to do a small tap like this. You want to kick through the target, just like with punching. Same thing with kicking. So we have the target here. The kick will start in a chambered position knee close to your chest and a little bit higher than the heel in the basic basic way of kicking and we're going to start at a 45 degree angle the target is in the middle but we're going to be kicking out there the target stays where my hand is if you can see it so the kick comes out like this we point our toes and the kick will go through the target and then hook in let's get to the details later but basically you have a 45 degree angle you get in you have the target, you go through it. There's the 45 degree angle where you're gonna get out. So there's a, about 90 degree, somewhat 90 degree um, sector you're gonna kick through with the power. So start slowly, extend, so extend your foot. There are many ways to kick. You can kick with the heel if you wanna kick through boards. I prefer to do it with pointed toes because I think it looks prettier and you're still hitting with the Heal if you want to, so it's still doing a lot of damage if you do sparring and stuff. But you also have a little bit more reach. So if you're going like this, as you can see, if I point my toes, I get a few centimeters more, or an inch or two, if you're American. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're getting the kick out, we're kicking all the way across, and hooking it in. Try the same on the other side. Take your time. So you go out across and a hook in. Then back here, you can try it fast, do it first slow a few times, then again, a little bit faster if you feel like it. So you can have the ankle flex, or you can have it pointed, like uh, your toes pointed like this, like you would in Dolio Chagi or Banda Chagi. But um, either way, if you want to do it like this, that's fine as well, but don't let your ankle be loose. Your ankle is loose like this that's no good you have to tense your muscles so you don't hurt yourself when you're kicking if your ankle is like this it will hurt no good keep it tense so if it's pointed 
tends to point it. If it's like this, keep it like that. So, let's get a chair and move to standing. Now it's going to be exactly the same movement, but now we have to practice the balance a little bit. Use the support as much as you need. If you don't need to, that's fine as well. Keep your arms in under control. And try to have a good angle here so you can see what's happening. Have a support. Same as when we we're laying down, shoulders relaxed. If I go to the targets again here, I'll kick out 45 degrees, go through the target, then back here. From here, you could do, basically do a Dolia Chavi again if you feel like it. So you could go like one, two. That's already a nice combo for sparring if you're able to do that, or for freestyle pulls. Anyways, from here, knee up. So don't let it be like here. We want to train our glutes, the muscles here that lift our knee up and go all the way across. I'm trying to get a straight line, straight line from left to the right or the right to the left, either way. So you don't want to go like this. Now it's going like that. Or also neither like that. Now it's going from down to up. When we try to get the basic version, try to always go horizontal. So all the power goes into your target. Might be a head, might be someone's torso, might be a kicking target, kicking target like this. Same thing, you want to get all the power straight in here. You don't want to go like this, you want to go like this with the kick. So, other side, go slow again, take your own time. If, it's, if you know the kick, you can focus on the details already. Knee up, kick across. Eyes on the target, where you want to see where you're kicking, don't look down. People tend to look at the floor when they're trying to find their balance. It's important to see your target, so you're not kicking blindly, but you're precise and know where your leg is going and see what your opponent will do if you're doing Chorogi. Or your imaginary, imaginary opponent when you're doing Pumse. Same thing, you cannot be looking at the floor, you need to see the target you're imagining. Any questions about that? Let me know in the comments. Hello Franz, fuck yeah. You can see many people are online already, that's awesome. If you just tuned in, we're training hook kicks, feel free to join. Be careful if you haven't warmed up, take your time. So, let's get to the next phase. We've been doing it pretty slowly now. It's always good to practice kicks and all technique for that matter, pretty slowly. Because when you're doing slowly, you will notice which parts feel difficult and you actually have to really concentrate on what you're doing. And also when you're doing slow kicks, you need to use more of your muscles. You cannot speed through it. You need to have the control to stop the movement whenever you want. So, I was talking about the running motion before, you know, when we were doing the warm-up, we were running. If you think about what happens in running, your knee comes up, it goes down, and it will go back because you're pushing yourself forward when you're running. So you're coming like this when you're going really fast. So if you're running across, your knees go up and you're kicking the floor. Do you see what I mean? It's going down, you're taking speed and then you pull it back in, you're running. This is a running motion somewhat like this. It's not perfect, I know, but uh, you get, the, you get the, the point across. So what we're doing in hook kicks is basically exactly the same. We're doing the running motion like we would be running, knees up, like this. But then we just can see my foot. We turn the standing foot with the heel pointing towards our target. Our target is here. And instead of running like this, we're actually running through our target, if you can see what I mean. Your target over there, bam, it's almost the same movement as in running. We just twist our hips up. So we're kicking higher, the floor isn't there, it's there. The, the target we imagine or have. So that can help you understand the movement. It's also a very good reason to do the kick this way, if you think about it, because it's a very natural movement for 
the human body to do with your hip, your knee and ankle as well. So that's how you're gonna be able to generate a lot of power because when we're running, that's what we're made to do. You're using all the big muscle groups from your lower body. That's what we wanna do in the hook kick as well to get as much power as we can in our kick. Yes, let's move forward. Now we can leave the chair there for a second. Take a sip of coffee or water if you feel like it. Maybe don't drink coffee if it's very late there. Um, so let's move on standing, freestanding. If you're not comfortable yet, still feel free to use a wall or a chair. But if you want to challenge yourself, <clears throat> let's get to the next part of the kick. So we need, now we need to have a good balance. As I said earlier, your heel should be facing your target. I'm not standing like this when I'm kicking that way. If I'm standing like this, I'm actually kicking that way. Always, in hook kicks, try to point your heel towards your target. If you have a fighting stance like this, let me pan the camera a little bit down so you can see my feet as well. If you have a fighting stance like this, you would be kicking with the front foot, push your knee up, and turn the back foot. Just practice this, front leg up, knee up. Knee doesn't stay like this, we're not doing a back kick. Also not straight like this, it's not a front kick. It's like the same as in, somewhat the same as in side kick, if you would be doing side kicks with the front leg. Now we're doing hook kicks, knee up, you see the target is again here, out and across and then back down or when you do the kick you can do a dolly a chubby afterwards if that's what you want to do knee up again you can keep your knee up pull it back here to do another one so you can just stand and kick across the reason why we're doing the kick also in this way that we have this sector is because if we can do it like this, we can also variate it if we want to later. Because in Kyorogi, you might not want to have a really large one, large uh, hook kick or spinning hook kick, because it might be easier to see for the opponent. Because if you're coming from here with a long, big hook kick, it might be really powerful, but it doesn't help if your opponent sees it and just does this, and the kick goes across and doesn't hit them. So you can also do it a lot more straight. If the target is here, you can just go straight through it. But that's more Fukurogi. Let's get back to the basic version I like to teach and then find for yourself what is the best way for you, for the attention you're having. If you're doing Kyorogi, it might be different for freestyle Pumse or Pumse or just basic technique if you want to kick the air or training with a sparring partner or self-defense. Same thing. Again, knee up, kick, kick through. One more time, slow. You have your knee up. You have the 45 and 45 degree angles. So like a 90 degree pizza slice, if you think about it, my arms are the pizza slice like this. You wanna kick all through it. The power goes through the target, like a baseball bat. You're going through the target. Same thing, switch sides. From a standing, you have a fighting stance, or it doesn't matter, you could be doing from T, could be if that's what you want to do. Have your hands on the control, knee up. Again, remember the standing leg, really important to point your heel towards your target. So, next part, let's focus a little bit on what the upper body does. Because even though we're kicking with the lower body, our upper body is there still. We can't forget about our upper body. What are our arms doing? What is our face doing? Our eyes doing? Our head doing? One of the key things to get a lot of power in your hook kicks is to, and, and to keep balance, is to have a counter movement for your kick. Because if you think about it, when I extend to here, I'm falling that way if I don't do anything with my upper body. If I'm doing a spinning kick, same thing. I'm falling after my kick if I don't do anything with my upper body. So, 
If you know a little bit of phys physics, just the basics, you understand if your leg goes that way, something needs to go that way to keep your balance point. Because your balance point is right above, should be right above your foot. So you kick, kick through. Think about uh, elbow punch. Elbow strike to the opposite direction of the kick. You have your arms under control. When you kick through, push the elbow to the opposite direction. Do this a few times slowly. Might feel a little bit weird at first, but once you get the hang of it, it makes it a lot easier to keep your balance and to make power. Because if you're only doing with the leg, it's just a little bit of a snap. If you can actually twist with your back and side and core muscles, that will help a lot. Have a sip of water. I'm gonna have a sip of water because otherwise I will lose my voice. Wow, 130 people live watching. Awesome. Take it slow if you just joined. Feel free to still join in, but warm up. Don't get injured. So, as I was saying, upper body, when you have the kick, goes to this other opposite direction. And if you can see, now I'm actually like a teeter-totter, if you think about it, like this. As a kid, you go on the teeter-totter with your friend. So when the other side goes up, the other side goes, the other side goes down. Same thing with your leg and upper body. When, you, when you're standing here and you're doing the kick, you need to have the balance so you don't fall in either direction. Knee up. At the same time, the kick and the front arm. So the arm, the same side arm as your kicking leg. So if you're kicking with left, like I am, your left arm will kick the other way, or punch the other way, rather. So from here, snap. Try to get a quick and easy snap. Don't use too much strength when you do it. Try to be fast. Same as in running. You're not trying to really like kick the ground really, but you try to be as fast and tap through it as you can. Same thing with kicking. If you want to be fast, that's going to make your attacks also a lot stronger. Even though it might not feel like it. If you think I'm tensing a lot, I'm much stronger. Yes, you might be stronger, but your punch isn't bringing as much impact as necessarily as when you're a lot faster in your movement. Same with kicking. If you have a slow kick, it's not probably not as um, effective as a fast kick. And also when it's faster, you have a bigger chance of hitting your opponent or target before it moves away. So, or eyes, always on the prize. You have the target in the middle. When you're kicking, even though you're moving your upper body like this, don't let your head drop. Some people like to go, when they're going really big with the T shape, if you think about it, this is a little bit like a T. This is the letter T with my leg, other leg, and upper body to keep the balance. But try to keep your eyes on the target and then reposition. Same thing, keep your eyes on the target. You don't want to look away because then you don't know what the opponent is doing. Also helps with the balance. If you're feeling like it's really hard to balance like this, you can still use the wall or the chair, but still don't look at the floor, look where you're kicking. At this point I'm kicking towards the camera, but when I'm kicking that way, I should kick that, uh, watch that way as well. So that was the really basics and fundamentals of the basic hook kick when you're doing it with the front leg or standing. Let's move on. We're doing it with the front leg. When it's here, you just lifted your knee up and, and kicked across. Instead of here, we can also go with the back leg. If you can see it, my target is now over there. I'm not kicking with the front leg. I could do that as well, but let's try to do it with the back leg now. Go straight up, the straightest way possible to your knee up here. Target is there. You come up like a sidekick. I could be doing a sidekick. Whoop. 
side kick with the back leg or I can come up like this and still do a hook kick like that might be a lot harder to see for the opponent so it's a good variation to know and good to train for balance and stuff it's good to be able to variate your technique to do from different setups do that a few times both sides try to get your knee up as tight as possible if your leg is straight like this when you're trying to go for the hook kick it's a lot slower it's a lot heavier and also the opponent can easier more easily see it or even block it if your leg is going like that you could block it with the leg or with the arms whatever it is or it can, can come to, against the shoulder if the leg is coming up like this you want to get it tight from here and then when you go straight across then reel back again so you can kick again when you're doing tricking and stuff you might want to actually or show taekwondo demonstration things where you're kicking boards you might actually want to when you're doing spinning hook kicks just reach far to the side with the straight leg that's okay for that but of course if you're standing like this and your opponent is still there might not be the best thing so that's a good variation for some things but always know why you're doing it that way don't just do it whatever way you just fall out of it so now we have the basics from the standing hook kicks let's get into the spinning version of the hook kick take a sip of water or cold coffee to keep going spinning hook kicks let me get my chair not to sit, but for support when I'm demonstrating. First, what is a spinning hook kick? It's exactly the same kick we were doing, like this, but we do it from a spin from the back side of our body. So it's not coming straight up. We're twisting and turning around, and then we come across. Make sure you have enough space when you do it. You don't want to hit anything in your room or your family members or anything. So be aware. If you don't have enough space, just do the normal version, please. Or train outside, if that's possible and it's not too cold and you're allowed to go outside. So we have the fighting stance. The first thing I want to teach you is to do it with a step, just on the, mark, on, on the spot. Let me turn the camera again a little bit. So if you're here, you have your fighting stance, could be stance, whatever it might be, you might be sparring, bah, and then the other attacker is coming, you want to do a spinning hook kick, because they don't see it coming necessarily, or it looks just better, it looks cool, of course, that's why we do it in freestyle. You want to turn, your target is here, you want to turn your standing foot, heel towards the camera, just like in the normal hook kick when we're going, you want to see the target, he comes up and hey, now we're in the beginning position of the hook kick again. So let's go slow again. Turn around. You want to see the target. So your eyes need to lead to the prize, which is the target you're going to kick. And then you go across. So one more time, slow. You can take a little bit of momentum with your arms or your upper body. If you want to get a lot of spin, that's okay, I think. If you're going from here. Most important thing is to lead with your eyes. So you see the target, see the target again, wait on that foot, kick across, and if you have enough momentum, you can spin back down. So everybody's still in line. Nice. From here, spin again, step. It's easier to do it with the step. In sparring, you might want to do it in one motion. Let's get back to that in a minute. But first, I want you just to step down, hook kick. Same on the other side. You have the fighter stance, or could be akubi for that matter. It doesn't really matter. Whatever your stance is, could be a boxing stance if you're doing kickboxing, or taekwondo. Probably taekwondo because you're watching it here. But anyway, same thing. Even if it's akubi, you want to turn the leg on the front, and then come across. Again. 45, 45 angle to get the sector you want to kick through. 
above your uh, your own head height about you're gonna turn around see the target eyes on the target and you can either drop it down on the front or keep spinning and come back down same again other side a little bit faster if you're comfortable but be careful don't fall away don't hit anything in your room or at your gym and back down from here one more time a little bit more slow you turn around see the target kick through reel in and then you're back in your stance same position as you started so you could do multiple hook kicks if you want to or you could do it with jumps as well let's not do jumps now because there's no space there's no tatami hard floor doesn't matter but my neighbors might not like it if i start jumping i'm already shouting almost to make sure you guys hear me so that's just from the spot what if you would be doing sparring you might not want to show that you're turning your leg of course when you're doing it really fast it's probably going to be automatically one motion because you're going to twist your hips and your neck to see your target so if you look at my foot i'm not starting with that i'm starting with my upper body the weight goes a little bit to the front leg so I have the balance here comes across same on the other side be careful yes if we're doing sparring now you have to use your imagination if i'm sparring this way there's my opponent I'm sparring there's i'm not going to be the opponent opponent the opponent comes like this with a kick with the jolly chuggy gonna kick like this to me here at the stomach so you gotta imagine there's coming a kick to my stomach i want to do a counter attack i'm gonna do a spinning hook kick from here i might want to actually move my front foot a little bit to make enough space you can just go from the spot like this that's fine but if you have a little time and the opponent is coming really fast forward or with the front leg probably these days like this you might need to have a little bit more space so you're going to move this leg the front leg at the same time with the kicking leg so you're going to do the twisting motion like that and if you look at my feet the front foot is going to move a little bit backwards so what i'm basically doing is my hips are going to just turn like this i'm just going to do a 180 turn on the spot so if you just think about it i'm there i'm twisting like this you can see my front leg the right leg in this case is going to move backwards when i do the spinning kick so that's how we're going to get a little bit more space because if i do it standing my kick will go almost out of frame as you can see but when i move backwards with the leg i'm coming backwards so it's a defensive motion that's one variation you can practice more when you have more space just an idea to think about to have a different variation for kyorobi as well let's see we have quite a lot of time still left which is great so we can get a better deep dive into spinning hook kicks the next variation also pretty basic is something you might use a lot more in tricking combos or spinning demonstration combos for freestyle booms uh, or board breaking when you're doing demonstration with the team or something it looks nice you're moving sideways while you're kicking that way so it could go like round kick hook kick round kick hook kick and move sideways even though i'm kicking that way because it's an easier way to really showcase your kicking skills so what's the difference you might be in a fighter stance like this or like this doesn't really matter but instead of twisting on the spot from here we're going to actually step a little bit in to the side or direction we're traveling our momentum is going that way i'm stepping over we call this a step over hook so if i would be like this i step over kick across same to the other side i step over and what, what i mean with stepping over you have the center the, the kicking line you step over whoop, 
almost hitting my couch, step over the center line and turn to do a kick, a hook kick. This might actually be easier in the beginning to do as well. I think as well, uh, at least, because you're gonna be, it's gonna be easier to turn, to turn your heel towards your target when you step across. When you step across like this, you already have your heel pointed towards your target. So you're just gonna turn like this. And it's almost the same as a front leg hook kick. So it makes the spinning hook kick a lot easier when you step like this and kick across. Of course, it's probably not good for sparring or so because people will see what you're doing when you're stepping like this. You're going off your line. But a good variation to have if you want to get into tricking and also just to practice your skills. You have many variations. So, let's see, keep, keep the comments coming. I won't have the time to check them all now, but if you have questions, let me know in the comments. So, also, why do we practice our hook kicks with this technique? Why do we want to keep this really tight when we start and also maybe when we finish? <laughs> finish, very funny because I'm from Finland, if you can see. <laughs> Anyways, why would we like to have this like this, really tight? The, the answer is probably spinning kicks. If we're doing spinning kicks, and harder kicks like jumping kicks when we jump up and in the air do the hook kick then um, it's much easier to spin when you're tight like this if you're spinning like this it's really hard if you're spinning like this you go much faster same thing with your kicking if you're doing spinning kicks like 540 hooks i'm not going to do any here inside but you would go up spin and then kick it's much easier to do spinning kicks and jumping kicks when your hook kick goes from a small compact format and then you kick through and then get it back under control in a small format because you can keep spinning and doing your combos. That's one good reason as well. What else? I had some notes over here. Let me check that I'm not forgetting anything. So, there are also other ways which I think have their place. You could do it with a straight leg. I was talking about why the compact version I'm teaching you is, in my, my personal experience, I think one of the best ways to train the basic version, and then you can variate it because it's quite in the middle of all the uh, different ways there is to do. But you can also do it with a straight leg, pretty old school, from here, all the way with a straight leg, or maybe even with a heel from here. That's gonna be a pretty powerful thing, especially if you wanna do like board breaks, if you have like a, a lot of amounts of boards and someone's keeping the boards like that, might be a good way to get lots of power. But of course, it's probably slower and people are gonna see it coming easier. So you could do it with a really big, not so much as a hook, it's not so much of a hook when it goes with a straight leg. It's more of a baseball bat like, bang going through it's a good way to practice as well i think you should try different things and then find your style as well of course in recognized pumza it's really really standardized the way we should kick and i think that's good but also just as a martial artist in general it's good to practice different styles as well to understand different concepts and how you can apply them i'm talking again a lot i'm sorry for that if you just want to kick and train Feel free to kick when I talk. Um, what else? When you have a very big hook kick, it looks pretty cool. So also for tricking, it might be your style when you're doing just a hook kick to just go with a straight leg, most of the part. But now you can see again, my upper body is going to the opposite direction. Because if I don't do that, I kick through, I'm falling after my kick, because my kick is going that way, through the target. If I do, 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 don't do anything with my upper body, I might lose my balance, and we don't want that. Same thing if you're doing spinning kicks, you're doing 540s, and you're always crashing. You're thinking, what, what am I doing wrong? You might be doing everything right, except using that elbow 
and your upper body to the opposite direction. Because when you're landing from the air, you go up, and then you're kicking like that. It's really hard to land if you don't counterbalance. So always think about that as well. You could imagine there is actually an other target at the same time. You're kicking like this to the target number one. There's another target over there. You want to elbow that. Or even punch that. Think about it. Hook punch. That way. I don't want you to go straight with it, but it can help you understand what I'm talking about. About the arms in general, don't tense them up. We don't want that. We're losing energy. We're very tense. We're not fast. We're not relaxed. We want to keep our arms under control, close to our chest or even our face. So you have good control about, uh, from your, uh, of your upper limbs. When you're doing the kick, you can use them for momentum. And I really suggest to actually use them as well. Even if you're not going like straight like this, think about using your upper body to get momentum for the spinning kicks. So what else? One more tip I'm really thinking about is if we're doing hook kicks and curvy, I don't have a partner now to hold the target. Let's imagine the target is about here. Where my hand is. This is where my hook kick would come if I just do it on the spot. If you're thinking about Kyorogi and my target is like this, going here, and I'm only going this way, it's not a big reach we have. If we're going like this, and the opponent goes like this, your kick might just go straight in front of his face, doesn't hit him, no points, no damage to the opponent, kind of useless. What could we do to make it a little bit different, better suited for Kyorogi? We could, and we probably should, make it a little bit smaller, a little bit more like a side kick or back kick, if we're doing it spinning or if we're doing it like a nakachabi. Instead of going all the way, this big way, from there to there, we can go a little bit more straight through the target. So if I, my target is here, instead of going like this, I try to go forward with the kick. So even when my opponent does this, you can still reach his head and hopefully get points or hit the target. So that's also something you can think if you're a fighter or trying to uh, train for your black belt or belt test, any, any belt test for that matter, self-defense things. Same thing with the spinning hook kick. You don't want to go really big because the opponent will see it when you go like really large and beautiful. <laughs> for Kyorogi you want more fast and snappy. You think about it, you might want to actually think of the start as a back kick, like this, and then reach through the target. You can also do the switch I taught you earlier, and then combine it. But you want to reach through the target more in fighting, so your kick isn't going like this, it's going through towards the target. So when the opponent goes like this, you can still hit him. Anyways, any questions about, about training or about these? Someone asked to slow it down again to see. Sorry, I didn't notice your comments before. So let's go really slow again. One more time. Good way to practice. You can use the chair or the wall just on the spot. Target is in the middle. Want to go out 45 and kick out 45 through the target. To get more snap and speed and power in the hook kick, I like to think, just to think, don't do a side kick, but think a little bit about a side kick. Because if I do a side kick, there's the target, I go like that. But if I do a hook kick, the snappy one, I think a little bit about the same motion by knee and hip is doing. I'm just going from the out to the in, inside. Same in the spinning one. One more time, other side, a little bit slower. Go across, use the elbow to have the counterweight. 
pull your leg up, keep your knee under control, kick through. I hope that helped if you didn't see the slow version in the beginning. So, I think that was most of the things I wanted to go through today about the hook kick and spinning hook kick. Let me still know if you have questions about this technique or in general. Let me see. I can see there are a lot of people here from France, from America, Portugal, also from Finland, Moriesta, <laughs> Denmark. Awesome. Great to see many people are tuning in. So, that's most of the things I wanted to go through, I guess. There's lots of different things you could talk about, hook kicks and spinning hook kicks. But I think if you understand these concepts I talked about today, and you're able to implement them and practice them at your own time, at your own pace, really think about it and really feel how you're kicking and practice it. Because even if you know how you should do it, it doesn't help if you don't train it. You gotta train your basics, all the kicks, front kicks, yok chagi, side kick, back kick, all the jumping kicks, you've got to practice them, of course. Makes sense. So, what else? Nespresso. Oh, sorry, not sponsored by Nespresso. Let's do a little bit of a cool down. We've been, at least I've been sweating quite a lot. It's cold outside in Finland, but just doing a little bit of kicking might warm you up pretty much. Let's just sit down. If you have any questions, let me know regarding training with this kick or other kicks, about my training, about Finland, doesn't really matter, whatever you would like to ask. Now you should have the chance. Try to relax your legs. No need to go too extreme. Just a little bit to stretch the hammies and hamstrings. Go from side to side. A little bit the same as in the beginning. Let's do a pancake stretch. Again, try not to be like this. If it's really hard for you, try to use your arms and set it to sit more straight. Or even use a pillow or something if you're really stiff. We all start somewhere. If you're sitting on the pillow, that might help you so you're not sitting like that with a bent back. You want to have a straight back. Then go forward as far as you can. Just relax and stretch out. If you don't need the pillow, pillows, no need for those. But if you want to use them, it's better to do it with a good form and actually get mobility for the long run in the right places instead of just trying to force it in the wrong position because you're stretching at this point more your back than your um, adductors. So better to get your adductors stretched. Try to relax, breathe slowly in and out. It's really important to stay calm and relax. Now we're not going max at all. We're going really easy. So if I could go full split, I'm not going full split. I'm going a little bit, very relaxed. Should be easy after training. If you're doing really mobility training, that's again, something different. There are many ways to stretch. Now let's just cool down, do some internal rotation. We've used our glutes a lot. So it's good to also do the counter movements. Keep our hips in good shape and healthy. Go down and squat if you're able to. Put the heels down. Use your elbows to stretch out. A little bit of movement. Bend down. Go to the left side. Nice. Go to the other side. Keep breathing. Don't stiffen up. A little bit of movement is okay. Take it easy, take your time. Feel how your body feels. Go back down here. Tony's going out. Try to keep your back straight again. Whoop. And push with your elbows gently outside. So you're not going like this. You're keeping them out, keeping your back straight if you can. So let's see if we have some more questions. Hello, Tony. Great if you learned something, good to hear. Someone from Zambia is even watching in Tunisia, India, 
all over the world. Awesome to see if you see you guys. We're tuning in. And we're still tuning in. Let's stretch quadriceps, the front of our legs. Whoop. Pretty easy stretch. Don't do it too hard. Keep breathing, taking it slowly. Other side, same thing. If you can see it better from the side, ankle behind you, hips straight. So you want to feel the stretch on the front of your leg. Other variation I like to do, knee forward, feel the stretch here. Don't be like this. Try to push your hips up and forward. So you feel the stretch on your quads. Other side. This leg is just for support. The back leg is actually stretching. Hello, Sergio. <laughs> Hello, Asef. Someone from Austria as well. Awesome to see you guys. A little bit more relaxed stretching. I can take a pillow if you want to, or if you want to go on the hardcore, the hardcore you can do that as well. Hip flexor like this. You can put the pillow underneath your knee if you need to, if you have a hard floor, if you're on tatami, it's okay. One more time, this one. Foot on the floor again. Don't let your back arch. Keep your hips under control and then go slowly down. Move up to the back. Toes pointing backwards, going back up. A little bit of movement. Other side. This is a great way to practice your front splits. If you're not getting them already down, like down all the way already. Also, if you're able to do them and you want to improve them, I still like to do these as warm up and stuff. And also for improving mobility and stretching, you can use the back leg as well. If you want to slide down, you can do that with your splits. Other side as well. Middle as well. Not too extreme. Keep it simple and keep it keep it pretty steady at this point. We've been training already, so. Hello, some more people from the USA. How are you doing? From Italy as well. I got a few questions from uh, the Lens sisters already. Um, that was basically it for the training part. We could still have a Q&A if you guys like. If you have any questions, keep them coming. Um, the Lens sisters were kind enough to give some questions to talk about if I feel like it. And um, the first question was about uh, when did I start practicing Taekwondo? I started, I guess, nine years ago, almost 10 years ago. Uh, when I was 14, I used to do football before that, uh, soccer in uh, the States, I guess. But uh, just the football where you're actually kicking with your feet, the ball. And then um, how did I start competing? I started competing when I, the first year I started, I guess, with the lower belt ranks. I did both Pumse and Kyorogi. I did both for quite a, quite a while until I only focused on Pumse and also later now on freestyle Pumse besides the Pumse, when I started to, to uh, compete internationally. One of my most memorable Taekwondo experiences is probably, that's hard to say, maybe, um, maybe the World Beach Championships um, in Greece. That was a really cool event. The first and second time I, uh, they uh, organized it, I was there and um, competing in teams with Franz and Oli from Finland as well. Fog Taekwondo, you can see the logo over there. We're training uh, Synchro together. But um, yeah, competing there, it was a really nice uh, event. Very well organized in the sun on the beach. What else would you like to do? Taekwondo outside with your friends. And um, some advice on mental preparation for championships or for belt tests. How to handle stress and nerves would be the next question. Um, my advice would basically be practice a lot. If you train competing, you get better at competing. It's pretty straightforward in that way. But um, 
also just when you do a lot of training, you get more comf com uh, confident, you know what you're doing. And um, that helps to build your self-confidence. And also when you're competing, you get experience about that. And when you're doing it the next, uh, next time, it's gonna be a little bit easier every time. And then you slowly build up confidence. In the beginning, it might be scary, really scary. It can later be also very scary. When you're going to the world championships, it's still really scary, even if you've competed for many, many years. But um, you gotta just take it easy, breathe in, breathe out. You gotta um, trust your training, know that you've done everything you could, and then just try to enjoy and stay relaxed, even though it's hard. But um, try to remember it's mostly fun to still compete. I think it's really fun to compete. That's what I, why I at least compete. Um, same thing for belt tests, might be really scary. And uh, maybe for a good reason. It's uh, usually very hard for most people. But um, just fo uh, focus on your training. Know that you've done everything you can. And uh, of course, you got to train to know you have done everything you can. And um, then just trust yourself. Do what you can. Only uh, control the things you can control. Don't focus on the things you cannot control. Don't think about the other competitors if you're competing. Because it doesn't matter what you think about them or if you're watching what they're doing, it doesn't matter what they do because you still got to compete and you got to focus on your own pumse or even if you're doing kyorogi, your own fighting. It doesn't really matter that much what the opponent is doing. If your own game plan doesn't work or your own game isn't sharp, if you're not focused, it's going to be hard to compete. What do I love the most about Taekwondo? Well, I love for the most part, of course, the art itself, the sport itself. I think it's both martial arts and sports and that's why I think it's really cool but for the most part I think the most beautiful thing about Taekwondo is that we're able to connect with many people all around the world like we're doing now making lots of friends through training and competition and um, what else best advice to stay motivated during lockdown yeah I know that many countries are having lockdown right now and um, it can be really demotivating if you're just stuck at home. But like you say, uh, could see today, it is possible to train inside at home. And um, I hope you guys still are training inside because I think training always helps to keep your mind clear. So even if you're locked down, try to do at least a little bit. If you're able to go outside, if you're allowed to go outside, go for a run, go for a walk and uh, get some fresh air as well. And uh, just know that things always turn for the better in the long run. Might take a while, might take a long time. I know it can be hard, but um, it doesn't really help to stay to become negative because it, because of it. It's not going to help you at all. Just focus on what you can control again, and uh, that's what I think might help you the most in uh, these hard times. That was pretty much everything for me, from me. Um, some more uh, more people saying hello from their country. Someone from Greece and also uh, from Mexico, I see. Thank you very much, everybody who tuned in. Hopefully you learned something today. Um, hook kick is a nice kick. One of my favorite kicks, especially the spinning one, because that makes, is, makes possible to train harder spinning kicks. So train your basics a lot. And um, I wish you all the best and a Merry Christmas. And uh, happy holidays once it's time. It's December already, but um, but um, yeah, take care, stay safe, even though it's hard times now in many countries because of the virus. But um, let's stay positive, train if we can, train what we can. We might not be able to train much Taekwondo now if, it's, if you have a little bit of space, just a little bit of space. But even in a little bit of space, you can still train lots of stuff. You can train your stances, you can train your basic blocks and punches, even kicking conditioning, stretching. Now might be the best time for you ever to focus on your uh, flexibility. If you want to get your side, side, side split, front split, now is a great time to use this time for your advantage and just focus on mobility or stretching. But yeah, stay safe and um, thank you guys for tuning in once again. My name is Christian Kamphaus. I'm from Finland and um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my name is Christian Kamphaus, just also my Instagram and uh, if you want to see Taekwondo related videos and vlogs mostly about competitions but other stuff as well follow FOC Taekwondo, Fok Taekwondo on YouTube. 
I think the link might be somewhere here. And um, yeah, thank you for joining in. See you guys.